fundamentally, it's like he's doing he's doing what we criticize the conservatives of. You know, this this uh, bending over backwards to be respectable. You know, um, p- pandering pandering to Brit. Like, let's trot out some some blacks that we let out of jail. Like, that's going to make a difference. Like, I'm sorry, white people voted for you. All you've done is tax cuts for rich people, criminal justice reform, and I guess we're going to do. Uh, you're you're going to give like some benefit that only Hispanics are going to get with the, with the uh, parental leave stuff. Kevin, what, what do you think? Because I, I I saw in the chat that the guys are reacting, uh, saying that you're 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 carrying water for this guy, but it's like, uh, I mean, unless he's just he's just beholden to his daughter, you know. But you know, this guy gets up there and he's like, fifty eight percent of new jobs have gone to women. It's like, great. I'm glad we've got more women in the workforce. That's going to be good for society. Oh, and we're also celebrating. More women in Congress than ever. Like, yay! And the freaking on the Democrat, the Democrat side, all dressed in white. You know, they cheer for that. It's like I'm glad we got them cheering. I'm so glad they're cheering about anything he says. That makes me so happy and so hopeful for the future. Is there anything different than him than about him than like what a Paul Ryan speech would be? Yeah, or like a John Kasich speech. Like, Look, what would be different? The speech, the speech isn't important. Okay. Look. At what he does, not what he says. Well, what has he done? What is he doing? <laughs> where's the wall? Where's the wall, dude? Where the, where's the Army Corps of Engineers? When, when's the deadline? Next week? How many days does he have? Because, you know what, it doesn't even matter because he's not going to do anything. He's not going to do anything. We all know it. I've been hopeful for so long, but, like, what, what is Q going to save us? Is Q going to save us? You don't know that nothing is going to be done. You'll have to wait until February 15th like everyone else. Yeah, I'm def- making excuses for the guy like, oh, you never know. He'll turn it around. Just you wait. You know, just you wait. And it's like it ain't, it ain't coming and it ain't happening. You know, and I, and I just got egg on my face for, for being the last guy to realize it. Pandering to blacks and Hispanics as opposed to his base. We could look at that. We could look at the hawkish rhetoric on Venezuela, the boomerish obsession with socialism. There- Black unemployment, Hispanic unemployment, Asian unemployment, lowest in history, lowest unemployment for disabled. Oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll work this time. Remember, Trump ran on this in 2018. He said, look, he toured the country. I have secured the lowest unemployment for blacks and Hispanics and Asians and women ever in history. How did they pay him back for that? Does anybody remember? I have a little little bit of amnesia. How did that pay off? Pandering to blacks and Hispanics as opposed to your own base, white people. How did that really work out for you? Did all these blacks and Hispanics dutifully come to the polls and reward you for your job well done and your concern for their well-being by giving them jobs and lifting them out of poverty by giving you maybe more than 10% of their vote for the first time ever? No! No! They gave us the same amount. If anything, they gave us less. And we talk about criminal justice reform. Thank you, Jared Kushner and Ivanka Trump. He talks about criminal justice and in very partisan terms, you know, for a speech that isn't supposed to be partisan, talking about disparities in sentencing with regard to race. Wow, that's a pretty partisan thing to say. In fact, it's straight out of the Democrat platform. You know, I guess instead of beating the Democrats, we could just simply become them and maybe we won't have any more problems, right? His two special guests for this little ditty are Alice Johnson who was a nonviolent drug offender. Oh, and she was serving a 30-year sentence as a black woman. Oh, what a hero. What a victim of our oppressive justice system. And then we get another guest, the first prisoner released from the First Step Act, Matthew Charles. Matthew Charles. Released, uh, and he was a drug dealer. He was a drug dealer in 1996. But hey... He a good boy. He didn't do nothing wrong. He's getting his life back on track. He was an honor roll student. He was the first prisoner released as part of the First Step Act. Oh, what a hero. He was a drug dealer. Standing ovation for the drug dealer. So what are we, a half hour in, and we're talking about how good the economy has been for blacks and Hispanics, and Ah, corporations are doing so well. Corporations love investing in America, and wow. 
All these drug offenders are being released. All these black drug dealers are just being released from prisons and systemic racism in the justice system. Wow, you were right when you said it wasn't going to be the Republican agenda tonight. You were so right about that. Actually, we just need them to come here legally, seriously, as if legal immigrants aren't overburdening the social safety net. They're not overcrowding the schools. They're not burdening the hospitals. They're not increasing crime. As if legal immigrants are perfect saints when they're coming from Central African Republic and Nicaragua and Mexico. Really? Have you been? I mean, does it make a difference if you go to Pilsen and they don't speak English? If they're, Do you have your papers or do you not have your papers? Does it make a difference if in Los Angeles you have Mexican politicians campaigning there? If they're illegal or illegal? If a minority speaks English there? If they got their papers, they don't? Seriously? So that's just botched. Next, and I kept hoping after that little segment, okay, um, I hope there's something else about immigration. It never came. It never came. The only time he talked about immigration after shutting down the government for a month, longest shutdown in history after he campaigned, we're going to build the wall, Mexico's going to pay for it. All he had to say about it was, oh, yeah, you know, this is a big problem, and then eh, we just need to make them come in legally. Oh, yeah, that's really great. Yeah, that's really wonderful to whatever globalist who wrote this speech. So you think all the homosexuals are out there and they're like, you know, we hate Donald Trump because we're left wing, but he really, he really stood up for AIDS and you know, I'm going to vote for him. Do you think that's happening anywhere ever? Like that that's a conceivable reality? Maybe they'll like me. Maybe they'll support me. They won't. They won't. We've talked about this at length on the show. These people are diametrically opposed to everything we stand for at the foundational level. At the level of metaphysics, they disagree with us. When you go out there and you talk about how great the moon landing is, World War II, we're one nation under God, even those things... They don't believe in, they don't believe America is a great nation. They don't believe America is even a good nation, morally good. They don't believe in God. In fact, I believe they think talking about God in the way that we do is some sort of ethnic centric take and it's Christian and everything. And I'm sure they're even against that. So the idea that, you know, if you just simply pander enough to black drug dealers, HIV, AIDS, havers, legal immigrants, and women, that all of a sudden they're going to say, oh, oh, on God, you support women too? I guess I'll vote for you. Maybe this guy's not so bad after all. It doesn't happen. It just simply doesn't happen. You have to play to your strengths. We have very good issues on our side. We, the right-wing conservative cause, we have things like virtue, order, tradition, hierarchy, authority. These are winning issues. These are issues that appeal to mankind's soul. The left has ideology. The fake right has ideology. We have something primordial. It's in the spirit. Pander to those values. Bolsonaro did it. Salvini did it. Putin, Erdogan, Xi Jinping. Look who is on the rise in the West and instead, or rather in the world, and instead we chose to embrace the ideological, civic nationalist, propositional ideas of Macron, Theresa May, Barack Obama effectively. That's what's coming upon us, that America will become a nation that is not the nation designed by God-fearing European Christian men, wise Christian men, the founding fathers that fought and died and sacrificed for a great country and had prudence. That nation is going away. We're becoming a nation of yuppies. We're becoming a nation of non-white brown yuppies bossing us around who don't even believe in God. They don't believe in gender. They don't believe in anything. And we're out there saying, we will never become a socialist nation. It's going to happen one way or the other, basically, right? That's not the threat. I don't care if I live in a socialist nation if I live in a nation that looks like it did in the 1950s. If I'm living in 1940 and let's say Huey Long is the president, I'm fine with that. As opposed to living in 2060 America where it's probably socialist anyway and it looks like Chinatown or it looks like uh, San Francisco, right? And then we pivot to Iran. Oh, I pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. They're threatening genocide against the Jewish people. He, this is just beautiful. You know a Jewish person wrote this speech. You know that a Jew wrote this speech because taking Iran and then pivoting and saying, well, you know, Iran threatening to blow up Israel is sort of just like the Tree of Life synagogue massacre and also the Holocaust. So we spend, what, 10 minutes talking about how oh, Iran is going to blow up Israel and this horrible massacre. And look, I've got the cop that killed that horrible anti-Semite killer. And then we're talking about the Holocaust. 
Why? Two Holocaust survivors, two! W what a bonus, as if one wasn't enough. What had happened 70 years ago and we're still talking about it? We still have survivors, two at the State of the Union? All right, it's enough! <laughs> To think that we were all, you know, so close to forgetting about the Holocaust. You've practically got more Holocaust museums than you've got McDonald's and Starbucks combined on every other corner. And every other day is Holocaust Memorial Day. I think, I think we're good on the forgetting part. I think, you know, we're basically good. I think we all know what happened. I think we all remember what happened. I think we're good on that, you know? But <laughs> we dedicated to like a full five to ten minutes of the speech on, oh man... And the Holocaust is so bad, and it's basically happening again because Israel is in the Middle East, and there was the synagogue massacre. Seriously? Seriously? You know, when I think about the state of our union, I think about demographic change. That's the main thing that I think about. I think about the fact that, again, if I drive in certain neighborhoods, they don't speak English. I, sp I think about the fact that the country is going to become minority white, by 2040 or 2050, I think about the fact that we've got foreign wars going on. I think about the $20 trillion debt. I think about the fact that your average American doesn't have assets. I think about the fact that our young people are growing up in homes where there is divorce, where there's horrible drug abuse, where children are being put on drugs, where there's horrible left-wing social engineering happening in the way of deviant sexual and gender propaganda. I think about college tuition being so expensive that... Every man, woman, and child in the next 50 years will effectively be a debt slave for at least 30 years and they won't be able to retire with Social Security. These are the kinds of things that I think about. But apparently the president is more occupied with issues like sexual degenerates getting AIDS or issues like poor foreign people who have no business here being able to come legally and black drug dealers languishing in prison for extended periods of time and Jews who survived the Holocaust? Really? That's the concern? He opens up the speech talking about American greatness, putting America first. Yeah, easier said than done. That really sounds nice, but I didn't hear so much about Americans tonight. I heard about everybody else. I heard about everybody else except for real Americans. And it was a big disappointment. It won't work because the people he's pandering to will never be on his side. When you pander to your enemies and you sell out your friends, you don't win your enemies. You just lose your friends. You have nobody. Big mistake. Big mistake. It's hard to see how he turns this around. More practically speaking, aside from the conceptual stuff, aside from the metapolitical stuff, is the immediate and most urgent concern, which is how, how in the hell are you going to get this wall built? 10 days, that's all you got before you either declare a state of emergency, which your own Congress is against. Your own Congress is bucking your authority on this issue. Mitch McConnell says it would be a bad idea, or you're going to make a deal, which nobody wants to do, or it's a government shutdown, which you cucked on in the first time. And it appears that there's no plan. And it appears that there's no plan. And if there is a plan, I don't see how not talking about immigration in the State of the Union is part of it. So aside even from this, uh, this you know, terrible, horrible strategy, which he seems to, em to have embraced, which is trying to appeal to our enemies and so on, the immediate concern is not being met. So it's a disaster. Worst speech, I think, that he's ever given. Without Very that. disappointing for a lot of the people on the chat. I am equally disappointed, largely. This is a boomer discourse. This is a post-World War II discourse. And... The play is there for a non-interventionist libertarian like me, who was fan of Trump during his campaign, is very little. Largely, we are talking about someone who will keep getting cucked, who will be a kind of force of kind of reason, surviving within the the mechanics of Washington, which are largely. Um, lost to foreign entities and which will keep being lost because we had our guy there and he couldn't clean the swamp he couldn't build the wall he couldn't make america for americans again and so that's where we are at that is the situation that is the state of the union